When Borderlands 3 was initially revealed a couple months back, I was immediately drawn to it. It seemed to be a sequel that was trying to essentially just to double down on the magic that made Borderlands so great in the first place. They were putting in more guns, more enemies, more locations, and more just crazy stuff to shoot at. And personally, that is exactly what I wanted. But to be quite honest, after seeing a lot of the initial trailers and stuff, I just kind of wanted to play it. I didn't want to watch any more media, I wanted to actually get a chance to sit down and try it for myself and see if this is really worth the hype. And thankfully, I actually had an opportunity to do this. What's up gamers, Dreamcast Guy here, and yesterday I was given an opportunity to go to Gearbox headquarters and play the game for about 90 minutes, playing through some opening missions, doing some side quests, and really getting a chance to explore this new and interesting version of Pandora. Now the biggest thing here is that I do want to thank all the people over at Gearbox that allowed me to go there and play this game, and I'm Honestly, to Wood from Beat 'em Ups. This guy is actually a fellow YouTuber and the person who actually knew the people who allowed us to go there and try it. As soon as I walked through the door, I knew that this was going to be a crazy experience. The studio itself is of course super super cool, but what's really the most important aspect is of course that I just wanted to sit down and play the heck out of Borderlands 3. So as soon as I got inside, there were actually these two separate main desks. One of them would actually allow me to play as the Siren Amara, or the other one which is Zane the Operative. These are two of the characters that are going to be fully playable in the final game of course. Now since Wood is currently actually playing through the early Borderlands games again, and he's much more of a Siren character, he decided to pick her, and I decided to play through the demo as Zane, the operative. Now, his speciality is basically being a semi-cyborg assassin. I mean, I have like a robotic arm, I can unleash drones, and what's kind of the most awesome aspect of him is the fact that he's one of those guys that is very much encouraged to be extra, extra vicious. So throughout this demo, the main goal was to try and basically break into this giant city that's been taken over by bandits or is being run by these psychos and try and hunt down this guy that was named uh, Gigamind. He's basically like a giant brain who could walk around and summon drones and blow you up. But what's really important is the fight through the city. As soon as you get dropped in here, you can immediately feel that the, the main difference of Borderlands 3 over Borderlands 2 or the pre-sequel or anything like that is the speed, especially playing as Zane. Now, so obviously in the trailers and stuff, you saw that now you can power slide and try and get behind cover quicker, but in general, it seems like everything has been ever so slightly sped up. The combat, the kills, the action, the chaos. And so because of it, I found myself just almost always at the edge of my seat, trying to duck and dodge and worry about what's going on next. And I will fully admit that I actually died a couple times during this demo, despite the fact that they gave me such good guns to try and defend myself. Now, part of this is because I was forced to play solo. So while me and Wood were there together, they actually told us that right now the servers just aren't capable of uh, the co-op play. That's something that they're probably still testing internally, but they weren't able to do it without having some glitches. So each of us was individually playing on our own, and I could tell that the game is definitely still, well, it's more of a multiplayer focused experience. You're supposed to have friends by your side. Now you can play this by yourself, and obviously I did here, but I can definitely tell that I'm going to have more fun when I have both buddies to back me up. And I do think that part of the reason I died a couple times is because, well, to be honest, I expected somebody to be able to help me out, and nobody can. There were a couple times where I actually had an NPC help me out. Uh, so throughout this, there's several different characters that actually show up. Now, some of them are from previous games, some of them are new characters, but they're all just there to actually join the fight. And what kind of struck me is, everything in this game has really, really great AI. Now really what I'm saying here is not only are the enemies smarter, but also the NPCs that join you are very, very intelligent. They're able to aim, they're able to keep up, they don't get lost randomly, they'll even commandeer vehicles and drive along next to you. Because this map I'm playing on was actually quite large, so because of it, you actually basically get vehicles and stuff and start cruising around the city. Now let me just talk about guns for a second, because I am about to just lose my mind fanboying, there were loads of weapons in this 
demo. I mean, literally hundreds of guns just spewing out of people in my inventory, or at one point they actually even came up and one of the uh, Gearbox employees pressed a button on my keyboard that spawned an additional like 100 super weapons, as you can see right here, and all of them are nutso. The rough estimate that they told me is that there's going to be something like 20 billion different styles of gun or something, where there's so many different styles of weapon and scope and special ability and elemental type that if you actually just laid them all out, it would have 20 billion different variations. So what I started doing is just grabbing different stuff and trying it out. And some of these are just crazy, because some of these are things that are beyond just a grenade launcher or a shotgun that catches people on fire or a sniper rifle. Some of them are things that are so unique you need to see them. Like this right here, this is like an assault rifle, but the big twist to it is that when you fire it, instead of reloading, you throw the rifle, it creates like a clone of the rifle in your hand that's now fully loaded, and the original version you threw sticks to a wall and acts as a turret. This is such a unique functionality, obviously, but beyond this, it's also just such an interesting tactical mechanic, because you don't have to just necessarily reload when your gun is empty, you could actually just throw this gun right away and start trying to stick them to walls to help you pincer attack an upcoming enemy, or try and defer an enemy ambush, because these enemies are very, very aggressive. They're psychos. They love to try and get in your face, and if they can, possibly eat it. Now, I want to talk for a second about the talent trees, because this is actually what I perhaps enjoyed the most, was really getting into the nitty gritty details of seeing how my character is going to work. Normally, I would not play somebody like Zane the Operative, but in this case, I'm glad I did, because since he was a little bit outside my typical comfort zone, I feel like I was able to be very, very objective about how interesting his talents are. Now, most of his stuff is very, very centered on running gun style magic. Basically stuff like, uh, the quicker I move, I can deal additional damage, or if I actually kill somebody for a couple seconds afterwards, I'll have uh, life drain abilities, basically making it where the more I'm willing to put myself out there and really risk my own life, I can actually become a more efficient player. These mechanics are great, and it's so freaking good to see a game that tries to just constantly push you in a different direction. I once heard somebody say that the greatest books are the ones where you can't imagine how they'll end, and I actually feel that way about Borderlands 3, where as I was playing it, I truly had no idea what the next enemy would be, or what the next psycho would say, or what the next weapon could possibly pull off, especially because so many of the guns now have alternate fires where you can actually change certain aspects of their functionality. Like at one point I had this really cool gun where I could change it between corrosive acid or shooting freeze bolts, which would turn people into giant blocks of ice. It's basically one of those games that's just constantly just throwing out weirdness in every single direction. Like, just as a random example of the time that blew my mind, so I was running through one of the city streets and I just wanted to see if I could survive against all these bandits and cars while I was on foot, and the gearbox employee behind me said, hey man, if you run up, you can actually steal one of these vehicles from them. And so, of course, I decided, oh, okay, that sounds fun. So I ran up, carjacked this dude, GTA style, and when I got into it, I realized that this was a tank that basically shoots lightning like Thor in the Marvel movies. Look at this, I am a freaking Thor in a freaking SUV, zapping everybody around me, shooting lightning out of my freaking nipples. This is what I wanted. When it comes to a sequel, I always want the game to try and be bigger, better, crazier, but also walk in the previous game's footsteps, and that seems like what Borderlands is pulling off. Now, if I did have any detriment, I would say that I do think that the auto-aim is a little bit strong. It's hard to tell whether or not that this is a pre-release build and they tried to basically make it ultra, ultra easy for press to make sure that they could actually beat it, but it se seemed like at times where it felt like my reticle was just stuck to people's faces. It actually was at one point so bad I decided to turn it off. I went into the menus themselves and turned off the auto assist because it was just becoming a little bit detrimental of I was just aiming so sharp that it was actually kind of throwing off my own custom aiming. It's not necessarily a bad flaw. I'm just saying that games like this, if they're trying too hard to be easy, sometimes they go too far. 
The only other super tiny gripe I have is that I still feel like the inventory system needs to be updated in some way. This actually has the exact same backpack system as the older games, and it's one of those things that I feel like could be modernized. In this, they actually did things to tweak the way quests work, they actually changed up some stuff from the map actually being like a 3D thing now so you can look at it from every direction, so having the classic style of backpack, I do think that it looks a little bit weird. But overall, I think that this is great. It was cool to be able to play a demo that let me go and fight this monster and do a side quest where I'm trying to track down super space coffee and lost bounty hunters. This is great. This is the Pandora we wanted, and honestly, I am definitely going to be playing this game day one. This is possibly going to be my game of the year. I want more. But what do you guys think of it? Have you actually enjoyed all this trailer and gameplay and stuff like that? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, share with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already. But do me the biggest favor of all, and keep dreaming. And thank you again to the Gearbox people who let me do this demo. That was so legit. Man, I still can't believe I've gotten a chance to play Borderlands 3! Thanks so much for watching that video. If you want to see something else, you can always click this link to see what I put up last or, you know, subscribe and see what's coming up next. Also, I promise that whatever I do, it'll try not to suck.